Hello, friends. Welcome again to God's Word Alive. We're sure thankful that you joined us tonight because we've got a really exciting Bible study we're going to dig into. Uh, you're familiar with Brian. He, he's here all the time, but this is Hamilton. <laughs> now, Hamilton's been off at school in, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he volunteered to help us out tonight, and I want to thank you for doing that because it's good to have our young people on board. Fired up for Jesus and it everything. Balances out the kind average. Of balances age. Balances out our age there. That's you know, right, kind, yeah. of, kind of goes like this right here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the opportunity to yeah. to get on and you know just kind of push myself. Yes, and, and that's what we told him to do. Brian and I are not shy about talking, so I I, I told Hamilton. I said, Hamilton, break in there, <laughs> get joined right in there with it. So, why don't we just start with some housekeeping, yeah. Brian, and we can jump on in. Many of you guys are veterans, you know, kind of know the drill, but if this is your first time, here's what we love to do. Participation makes this fun. And so we're asking you, uh, whether it be in Facebook comments down below the feed, uh, let us know that you're here, uh, share a verse, share a thought, that will get brought up to the table here. Uh, definitely send in a prayer request. We'll have a little bit of time at the end for prayer. Uh, if you prefer, you can text a comment or a prayer request to 479, uh, see here, I knew 220-7107, 479-220-7107. We also have uh, some people in our audience yes. tonight. They're on, they're on your side of the camera, folks. And so if they have some thoughts or comments, uh, they can send them up or even raise their hand. So yeah. we, we've got participation on all fronts. Yeah, sure is good. Hamilton, will you have us opening prayer? Yes, sir. All right. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for all your many blessings and just for the opportunity to, to slow down and just focus mm -hmm. on you, to, mm -hmm. to read into your mm -hmm. word. And I just pray that as we, we dive in and we look at it, that we can find insight for our own lives and that we can grow and use this message not only for ourselves, but give it to someone else too. In your name, amen. 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 You know, we... we advertise that what we're going to be looking at tonight is Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 9. Probably one of the most exciting times, yes. hindsight, uh, that there is in the Bible. Uh, but if you had been boots on the ground back then, it might have been another story, right? Yeah. Because there was a lot of persecution going on. So uh, what we want to do, let's paint a picture. Let's paint a picture to out everyone out there of kind of what it would have been like, what was going on at that time. Well, the, the Christians, as I read it, even if you if you bleed backward into Acts 7, mm -hmm. you see a level of boldness in their preaching and in their teaching that was really quite amazing. And that's really yeah. how our story begins tonight. Good was point. One, one individual gets in trouble. We'll get to that in a second. But you have this new fledgling Christian church that is on fire for God. Yeah. And they're willing to take any dart that comes their way if that's what it means to get yeah. the message get, about the risen Savior out. I think really to, get to, to, to just get a base here to go off of, like you said, uh, Stephen. Uh, mm -hmm. The stoning of Stephen that was back uh, earlier on in the Acts had a lot to do with where we're at right now. Because yeah. when you get to the book of Acts here, what's happening happening the key thing is the gospel is going out to the gentiles you know before the gospel had all it had really been jesus even told him just stay in jerusalem you know until the until the basically the point in time which we know now it, it's beyond the scope of this study but at jesus said at the, at the end of what we know is the 490 years we know at that time the gospel went to the gentiles now looking where we're at right now stephen who was, like Brian was saying, he was on fire, boldly proclaiming the word of God, and it was rubbing some people wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and what did they? What happened to Stephen? Well, Stephen got stoned. He got stoned, right? But if someone had called you stiff-necked and uncircumcised <laughs> in heart and ears, it might have uh, it might have rubbed your fur the wrong way too, and it, yeah. and it definitely did. But this story, uh, the setting is Saul holding the coats That's right. of the men who stoned mm -hmm. Stephen. Yes. He didn't have the stones in his hand, but he was complicit in what happened that it's, day. It's almost like he was a person of authority that had consented to it, and they were doing his bidding. I mean, yeah. that's almost mm -hmm. kind of what we get there. 
But uh, do you think uh, what kind of impact, and we can come back to Saul because we're going to spend a lot of time with Saul and everything, especially in, in Acts chapter 9 talking about the Damascus Road. But uh, what, happened, what happened to the church at that time? What, what, was, what was fulfilled? Uh, and, and I guess let's go to, let's go, to um, go to Matthew chapter 28. I want to go to Matthew chapter 28, and, uh, and let's read that scripture, Matthew chapter 28, uh, in verse 18, not, yeah. 18, yeah, 19. Yeah, read, read that for and, me, please. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, this is Matthew 28, 18, through the end of the chapters. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Okay. And, and so you're looking at a, a church that not only had a commission, mm -hmm. but now they had the fuel of the Holy Spirit. Yep. And, um, okay. So. Yeah, so, so um, here, here it is. God had given a commission. Jesus had given them a commission, Hamilton, to spread this gospel uh, throughout the, the world. And here they were, you know, they were, and I say that they could have been even in a comfort zone. Like that, but we know because of this persecution, and that's that's really kind of the way Acts chapter eight starts out. There, uh, it starts out very clearly. Read. Let's look at Acts chapter eight and uh, and uh, read what was happening here to the to these people and see if we can get a picture. Um, yeah. Let's verse three. Yeah. I think is what well, you want actually, to read. yeah. Verse <laughs> verse three. Yeah. Read, right. Would you like to read that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women and throwing them into prison. Okay. And, and there in verse 4, let's go ahead and read that. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. And, and I've got on mine in, in the New King James, preaching the word. The word. Uh, and, and, and the New King James, it said he made havoc of the church. Yeah. So, but he didn't stop the church. Yeah. He didn't right. slow them down. That's right. So that's, that's, I think, the main thing to bring out here is, yes, the church was being persecuted, but what was happening? It's like it fired them up. The, the blood of the saints was, was, was more like uh, fertilizer. It, it gave them courage, and they just went boldly out, sharing the, the scattered everywhere, the Bible says, and they were preaching the word. And, you know, the story of Saul stops for just a little bit. And what a lot of chapter 8 is, they tell several stories about these, these people that are on fire, mm -hmm. chasing down chariots to share the gospel, and, and just doing amazing things. Uh, while we're not going to cover that in great detail tonight, it was very, very refreshing for me to see that even though they met resistance, and at the cost of their own lives, yeah. in the case of Stephen, it didn't stop the boldness mm -hmm. that that they were going to carry out that gospel commission. That's right. Amen. Well, I mean, if you look at it, that just kind of goes to show how much the gospel meant to them, you know, to, to put yeah. your life out there in order to risk it. it you, you don't risk your life for something that's not valuable, yes. you know? Yes, and, and so I think it just kind of goes to show, you know, the more they scattered, it was more of a catalyst, you know? It yeah. just, I think the Jews had this idea, once they killed Jesus, it was over. Like, uh -huh. it was done. And here they see it being more popular than ever. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that just kind of, it made them more passionate and yes. it made the believers more passionate. Yeah. And it's just, they kind of fed off of each other, yeah. just mm -hmm. sending them everywhere. I love the way you, that, that, that point there, Hamilton. It, and, and I think it, I hope that it's contagious to us because it meant that much to them. I mean, it, it, was, it was more important than life itself. I mean, they were willing to die for this. I mean, it was something they were willing to put all in. They were invest everything. Well, I and pray for that kind of that it, kind of a heart movement in my life, Hamilton. For these individuals, they had spent time with Christ. They had witnessed not only his death but his resurrection. Yeah. And and to me, what I learned from that is no, that's not my storyline in 2021. But what if Christ was so real in my life? That just like Hamilton had yeah. said, it spurs me on. It's it, the it, most important thing in my life. Mm -hmm. It takes precedence over everything else. Even my health, even my, you know, the 
pain and what all they could have to, to bend. They could have got tortured for this, but it but it was so important to them that that it that it superseded that. It, well, go ahead. Well, it's like I I think for them, you know. God always puts himself out there as joy, peace, and comfort, you know. And yeah. I, I think they really experienced that. Like, yeah. they experienced that to such a level, like, the pain wasn't as strong. You know, yeah. it, it'd have to be, like, it'd have to be something so beautiful, it was worth the fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, it, the, the Bible said they were preaching the Word. The Word was something they were excited about sharing. It was almost like the Word is, is where their hope come from. In other words, you know, they, 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 they had hope. The word, word, you know, Jesus says the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. It's almost like the word propelled them. So you've got to hear this word. This is the word of God. This is what you need in your life. I mean, that's, that's what I'm picking up here. Well, so. And the Bible doesn't specifically say this, but as we move forward into the, the Damascus Road experience, I think that not only did they live with boldness, but they died with boldness. Mm -hmm. And if you look at verse 60 of chapter 7 of Acts, Acts 7, 60, this is how Stephen died. It says, then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when yeah. he had said this, he fell asleep. Yeah. And while it is not specifically said in the Bible, that, that act, those words, as Stephen stood there holding, or excuse me, as Saul stood yeah. holding those coats, yeah. he couldn't get those words out. Oh, no, how, that had to have been burning in his heart. How Stephen died yeah. with the grace of God and the interest of others at That's heart. That's right. For, forgive, don't even hold this against them. You know, and think about that. That had to have a huge impact on his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, they preached the word. They, they were the Holy Spirit. One thing that I want to bring out before we move on is that is that they when you preach the word, when you're bold sharing Christ, because there is a lot of peer pressure out there. They had to worry about their life. But now we got to worry about peer pressure. It's almost like we get a promise when we stand up for Jesus, when we go for Jesus, we go with Jesus and we go with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. One thing that I've picked up on Acts chapter eight is that is the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We see the miracle working power. Lives were changed. Things happened. Healings. You know, uh, the devil's cast out. You know, miracle conversions. These are the kind of things that will happen when we are bold enough to preach the word. When we are bold enough to be a witness for Jesus Christ in our workplace, in our common day-to-day -day lives, you will see miracles that take place. God will work through you if you're willing to be bold for Him. That's one thing I got out of that. And I, and I mentioned it earlier. I love, you know, if you can look a little bit later, we're not going to cover in great detail, but the story of Philip and the Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Holy Spirit filled Philip and said, chase down that car. In this case, it was a chariot. Yeah. And, and Philip said yes, and he did it. And, you know, am I willing to do something strange? Am I willing to, to be that aggressive and that bold in making a difference? Because you see not only the Holy Spirit fueling them to do bold things, but then you see the Holy Spirit taking that planted seed and making a changed yeah. life out of it. Ryan, I like that, that, that picture you painted there. And, and maybe, maybe you've not thought about it that way, but read that. Read about that story it, there. It's almost like he was chasing him down. Well, in Acts, uh, in Acts 26, or excuse me, Acts 8, verse 26, and then down to 29, the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Overtake it. So <laughs> Philip ran to him. He didn't yeah. stick his thumb out and wait for him to come on. Yeah. He, he was on foot. He was on they foot. They were on and horse he, and, and chariot. And he chased the chariot down because yeah. the Holy Spirit told him to. You get that to. picture? Awesome picture. You know, I'll I, I quickly say this. The guy that, that led me to the Lord, he, he kind of chased me down. He was so kind that he would let me know that he was going to be in the area. And there at first I was kind of hard to reach. Cause, <laughs> but he, come, he, drove, he made several attempts, 30 miles, 30 miles from my house to his house. And, and this, the, I think the fourth time he caught me there and... and Got finally, finally caught so, you in your chariot. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah praise God. You down. So, all right, we need to we need to move on a little bit uh, because we're, we're our time is escaping here. Um, and I, Hamilton, I'm going to ask you a question here. Uh, what kind of picture? 
What do we know about Saul? What do we know about this Saul? Because he seems to be a key fe- uh, character in, in both 8 and 9. Okay, so what, what we know about Saul, he's, he's a Jewish leader. Yes. You know, he's part of the synagogue, so he has a lot of authority, a lot of power, a lot of influence, and he's very good with Scripture. Yes. And he's, he's kind of known for it, and he's uh-huh. a little bit younger than a lot of the other Pharisees, mm-hmm. and they have these high hopes for him. Yes. They, they see him going places. And so, Lots of potential. Yep. yep. And he kind of, he has the zeal. He, he's feeding off of that and kind of wanting to kind of be this everything that they want him to be. Yeah. And so he kind of sees this new Christianity as a threat right. to that, you mm-hmm. know, and he sees a self to, he sees an opportunity, uh, he sees an opportunity to prove himself, That's you right. know, and so that, that kind of drives him to yes. just arrest these Christians and pursue them and just kind of, he makes it his mission to take them down. Well, yeah. and Acts 9, where Good. really the heart of the story is, confirms that it says, uh, Act 9-1, then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, and again, going back to the connection. With this story begins not with Saul backing off his threats and his murderous ways. He's, he's smack dab in the middle of persecuting, killing, and rounding up Christians yeah. when, when this story takes place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Said he was a Hebrews, a, he, he said this, he said he was a uh, of the stock of Israel, uh, of a tribe of Benjamin, Saul was a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, as concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law blameless. I mean, this guy, this guy was, was a, a perfect candidate to be like one of the leaders of the Sanhedrin. He had everything going on. He had all the zeal. But we know that he must have been touched when mm-hmm. Stephen, something, he, he seen Jesus in Stephen. He, he, he witnessed that happen and it touched his life. And then, and we're going to see soon that Jesus saw something in him. In him, that's right. So as, as bizarre as that seems with, you know, kind of the, the Hitler of his day for the Christians, Jesus saw something yeah. in him. And that's why this story it, took place. Before, before we go over into Acts chapter nine, because I'd like to carry us to the Damascus road, in the time that we got left, if that's okay. Uh, but why, and this is so important, because why did, why did Saul not just give in to the Holy Spirit right then? Why did he, I mean, because we know his heart was touched. And I think this is so important because there's so many people out there that, are, that, are, that, that would not stand up for Christ because of peer pressure and because of pre-existing thoughts or, mm-hmm. or ideas. Uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts without me just leading into this? Why do you think that at first he did not give in to the Holy Spirit and, 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 and be a follower of Christ? Why did, it, why did he resist that? Because we know he's seen Jesus um, at the front end. Any thoughts on that? Or, or, so this is pre domestic uh, yeah, this is, right. Yeah, because yeah. we know that, that the Holy Spirit was working in his heart. Right. Yeah. So, so what kind of helped him? What was keeping him from God? Yes, sir. Um, during my research, you know, and looking into this, um, it, it sounded like he did wrestle with it quite a yeah. bit. But he, I think, his whole life he grew up a certain way. Yes. And uh, he he's like, I'm here to serve God, and he thought. I think a part of him thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah, I and think so, so too. And because he had a way to justify um, mm-hmm. what he was doing, it was yes. a lot easier to put off Jesus because he had a justification to like, oh, yeah. it, it's okay if, if I push that aside because I'm right and they're wrong. Yeah, very good. I, and I agree 100% with what Hamilton said. There. And, and if yeah. you look at the second verse of Acts 9, it talks about him going to the synagogue, looking to the rulers, yes. getting his, not only direction, but but fueling, fueling yeah. this hatred. Yes. And I think that the Lord had to find a way to hit the pause button in Saul's life. Yes, that's right. Which yeah. is what he's yeah. about to have happen. Yeah, okay, all right, beautiful guys, that's <laughs> wonderful. Let's go, let's go into Acts chapter nine here, and let's pick up here at the Damascus Road. Anybody, would you like to yeah. read that? Let's read that let's again. Go verse, let's go yeah. verse three. Okay. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Capital M. 
And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Yeah. So, he, so he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And one, the rest of verse 6, Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. You know, that, that scripture says a whole lot. He had a Damascus Road experience. He met Jesus face to face. That's right. Yeah. Well, and, and you think about it. He lost his sight. Yeah. He, he was... But, but he lost his sight, but did he gain his sight? Yes. Yes. He, yeah. he, saw, right. he saw things that he had never seen before as a blind man. Right. Yeah. He had an encounter with Jesus. Why are you persecuting me? I mean, he already had the conviction. He already had the conviction that maybe, just maybe, uh, you know, I remember, for example, when, when I first started seeking God, I, I thought, could there be more to life? Could there be more than what I grew up with? Could there be more? I think that was something that was going on in his heart, in mine. And then, and then, then he meets Jesus face to face, and, and he he finds out that 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 through persecuting these these body of believers, mm -hmm. he was in fact persecuting, persecuting Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. But because, and, and the interesting thing here is that. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Mm -hmm. His answer was, who are you, Lord? There was even at the very beginning of this Damascus Road experience, some level of recognition yeah. of who had stopped his journey that day. He didn't fully understand. He was still probably confused. He was still scared, but he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And so in that instant, in that bright light, in all the confusion of what was going on and the fear, mm -hmm. he still knew that this wasn't just a chance meeting with, you no, know, this he, was he real. Knew, he knew he, this was real. He knew this was Jesus. He yeah. did. He, he knew that it was Jesus. And he found out something, Ham, Hamilton, you brought up a good point a while ago. He, he was zealous for serving God. Mm -hmm. He believed what he was doing was was actually serving God mm -hmm. and doing what God wanted. But when he had that Damascus Road experience and he realized it was very clear to him that he had not been serving God, but he had actually been the enemy of God. Persecuting right. God. So what, what, what can that teach us there? I, I think it's, uh, you, what, what is it about good intentions? Not like uh, the, the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I think if you don't take the time to really understand God's word or really understand uh situations are just wherever you are in life and you don't mm -hmm. take the time to actually come before god and humble yourself and say hey god you define the situation that i'm in and not just hey uh this is what i believe and i'm gonna do what i see is right you know you, you don't get to define what is right and wrong yeah you, you have to give that up to god yeah. and there's another clue that god was working in his heart before verse three because it says here, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. And a goad is a, is a stick with a point on it that was used to prod and to move cattle. But if you kick against that, yeah. it hurts. Yeah. And, and so you know that the Holy Spirit was, was, was prodding. He was nudging. Yes. But he kept kicking back. He kept saying no, no. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and God said, you know that it hurts. You know I've been trying to nudge you, mm -hmm. and it's not been doing you any good. Yeah. So here it is. Here it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Damascus yeah. Road. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I would like to bring out here is that um, is that I want to carry us back to to the scripture we we read a while ago when they said they were they were preaching the word. They were scattered everywhere, but they were preaching the word. Um, I think that, that an important point to make is that the word is where the truth is at. The word is where the truth is at. And, and so here, here we, bring, we bring Saul back. He's blinded here. Uh, he, he realizes that, that he, had been, he had been actually persecuting Jesus when he was persecuting these body of believers. And, and so now he's blinded, and now he has these, these few days that he is just isolation total darkness pitch black and the and so what do you think that was going through paul saul's mind then 
when he was there uh, at, at Judas's house. We know mm -hmm. he went there. And what was going through his mind? What do you think he was reflecting on during that time period, Hamilton? Um, I, I think he w must have been processing. Yes. Like he, he's, first of all, his whole career, you know, Jesus was a blasphemer and this criminal. Mm -hmm. And so now he, he has to go back and he has to recontextualize everything uh, that he's known about Jesus up to that point and look at it through the lens of the Bible and say, okay, is this, is this really the Messiah? And he, he has to come to a point where he actually accepts it and believes it. Amen. Amen. The Word. Yeah. He went to the Word. I believe he did. I agree with you, Hamilton. I believe he, he processed the Word. He, he, through the Holy Spirit helping him, he went back to the prophecies in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah, and he go, well, you know, Jesus did meet this. He did meet this. You know, one after one after one after another after another, he said, Jesus was a fulfillment of this. He was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. Well, and it, it's obvious that there was a two-way conversation going on between he and God. Yeah. And you see that in verse 11 and 12. And we'll get into Ananias in just a second. But Ananias is told, when you go and find Saul, you're going to find him praying. So there's your one direction. But he also says that in a vision he has seen you. So God is talking to him and he is talking to God in prayer. And it wasn't just three days of, of twiddling his thumb in darkness. No. It was three days of intense, I believe, heart-searching conversation with God in which he, he learned an awful lot about himself and who God and who Christ really was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's a good point there too, Brian. So we, we know that he had the Damascus Road experience. We know that, that he spent time with God in prayer. We know that he spent time in the Word of God because when he come out, what he come out, that's what he, he went out preaching the Word of God with boldness, with boldness. And because that's how he proved to the Jews that Jesus Christ was in fact the Messiah. Well, and I'm sure he's kind of like me. You know, I, I remember... <laughs> I won't go in a lot of detail. I remember when I started learning all these truths in the Bible, I just thought, well, all my friends, I'm going to be able to show them. It's going to be straight in the Word of God. And I'm telling you, they're just, you, it's, sometimes it's, it's a disconnect. So he had the same problem with the Jews, right? Well, he if, did. if you jump ahead to verse 21, this is after now. He's a different man. Then all who heard were amazed and said, is this not he who destroyed those who called in his name in Jerusalem? They... He, he had to do a little convincing for a little while. Yeah. So. Well, we we do know that that he stayed there in Damascus uh, for some time until when, until yeah. his brothers they was trying to reach were going to kill him. Yeah. Because because he was preaching the word of God, but they did not. They were so. This tells you the danger of tradition. But but the it's danger also of tradition. You can these these people. That, that that had been his his fellow brothers in Christ, brothers in, in, in with God in, in the Jewish religion that when he was sharing with them the scriptural the prophecies the fulfillment of all the prophecies happened just straight in the word of God they closed their mind to the point that they wanted to kill Paul and they and Paul they had to they had to, to figure out a way to 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 lower him down didn't mm -hmm. they get him out uh, get him out of town by nighttime uh, so because these people who were were godly people were going to kill him because he was preaching things that their religion didn't line up with but it so did it, line up with the word of God but it but it know. didn't line up with their religion mm -hmm. that they had been taught by the religious order but it is so amazing how quickly he went from being the hunter to being hunted yeah yeah but but how quickly he was given the strength to withstand mm -hmm. yeah so yes what what i was gonna say is um i i find it really interesting that like I'm trying to think of the right words to say here um he, like they thought that he was one of them you know what i'm saying like they're all rooting for saul at the yeah. beginning you know yeah and i, I think saul he was really like he had a he was debating some stuff like before and after like we were talking about like with Stephen and the stoning you know he, he's a little different than some of the other Pharisees at the time in the sense that he he's there trying to serve God you know whereas these other guys they're just really quick to close him off and they when when Paul was when Saul was persecuting before they thought like oh he's one of us yeah. um, and at the time he was but he 
at least had a heart that was willing to be opened. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, Hamilton. And I think that's a lesson for all of us there. Uh, we need to be open for the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, uh, like the Bereans, remember when the Bereans, uh, when they were, when, when, when they would go into the Bereans, the Bereans, what they would do is they would study the scriptures to make sure it lined up. So they would, they would, they would, they would take what was being preached to them, and then they would take it and they would compare it to the scriptures to make sure that it lined up. And that's that's what we all should do. We should we should we shouldn't buy anything hook, line, and sinker. We shouldn't we we uh, we shouldn't take what the religious rulers are saying. Uh, what we're that this teaches us is that we need to make sure everything lines up with the Word of God. And when it lines up with the Word of God, you know you've got rock solid truth. Yeah. So, uh, now, no good. I, I just I'm looking at the time nah. here. Uh, well, do we? We're probably winding up here. We're winding up. Uh, but I think it's important, just very quickly, that we take a look at this Ananias character. Yes. Because I think this is where our challenge is tonight. You think about Saul. For the early Christian church, he he was creating havoc in their world, mm -hmm. and yet. Ananias was told, go to this particular house. You're going to find this man. And this man was told in vision that you're going to come. And he actually argues with God. He said, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. It was kind of a, are you sure you want me to go? And I think what's so interesting here is, is God's response in verse 15. This is before the real, true conversion where he, he gets the Holy Spirit. God says, go, meaning to Ananias, go, for he, Saul, is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him how uh, many things he must suffer for my name's sake. God had chosen him. Ananias said, are you sure, God? Yeah. You I mean, know, this is you the know guy, who this character th is? Th this was the Hitler of the day. The Hitler I heard of the you day. Say it earlier. Yeah. And I find it so fascinating that once again, one of these early Christians, when God said, I need you, go, he said, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Even though it seemed illogical. And yet God saw something in Saul. If he can see something in Saul that he needs, he can see yeah. something in me that he needs. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Very, that's right. He needs some. He needs some people that are willing to go, regardless of the cost, and regardless of regardless yeah. of their past or present. So, why don't we just? Uh, I know we probably have some wrap up thoughts. You, uh, you spent a lot of time, Hamilton, going through this. Uh, is is there anything that made your heart burn that we hadn't covered yet that you'd like to share with the people out there watching? Well, one one thing I did find interesting, kind of going off of uh, Ananias, is. Um, like, why, why didn't God just, you know, say, hey, I took away your vision. Why, why did Ananias have to be the one to come and, like, be there when yeah. God gave it back? You know, God could have just remotely have done it. And I, I think that really speaks to the importance of the church ministering to others. You know, yeah, and that, 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 that God, um, instead of just kind of waving a magic wand, he sent a, another person to do his work. Yeah. And I, I think that's important for us to realize as the church to be willing to, like, if God calls us to uncomfortable situations, you know, to people who we don't think, you know, um, God, God's doing it for a reason. You That's know? right. He, he doesn't, if the whole ministry was up to God, you know, just to magically convict each person, you wouldn't be much of a community, yeah. you know. You know, I, I think God wants to use these experiences to draw us closer together. Yeah. The mm -hmm. church has a purpose, mm -hmm. in other words, in this big plan of salvation. Yeah. And it, and, and, and. That's another good point that I'm going to jump off what you just said. A lot of people think, well, I don't, I don't need to be part of a church. I don't need to be part of a, a, the body, you know, the church body or anything like that. We learn here, like when Saul, Saul had his, he asked, what do you want me to do? What will you do? What will mm -hmm. I do? What, what do you want me to do? And what he did, he connected him with the church. Mm -hmm. And through the church is where he got his, he got basically his instructions, to, his marching orders and everything. Yeah, yeah good point, Hamilton. Your assignment for later tonight is to go to Acts 26 and read a first-person account that Paul, now called Paul, yes. shares this experience from his first person, from his side. Mm -hmm. And we talked about what happened in that 
room, that house, for three days. And it's interesting that Paul says that while he was still on the ground, and while Christ was still telling him, you've been persecuting me, yeah. he said that Jesus told, told him in verse 16, but rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to, to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have been seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. Before he ever made it to Damascus, to the house of Judas, mm -hmm. Christ told him, there's something in you that I need. Yes. And that that challenge, that um, amazing statement was what was ringing in his head for three days as he talked and wrestled and prayed with God, going, Lord, how could it be me? How could yeah. you use me? Yes. And yet he did. Yeah. Wow. Good point. Good yeah. point. Well, I, a couple of things that uh, that I that I've kind of picked up on is, you know, why did why did God just not? I mean, Saul was persecuting the church. God could have just snuffed him out. You know, right. he could have when, instead of just blinding him, he could have annihilated him, right? But he didn't. And and this and you think back on that. It, it tells you the mercy and grace of God, but also how awesome God is to bring something uh, good out of what the devil meant for bad. We see it happening all the time. He, here he was. He could have, by, by, basically Saul was a general, you could say, in the enemy, on the enemy's team. So if uh, you've heard the saying, if you, if you just take out an enemy, if you take a general out on the field, well, you've caused some problems. But, but not as bad as if you take the general and bring him over in on your team. And that's exactly what happened. You yeah. know that had to have a huge impact because Saul had people that, uh, that, that knew Saul, that knew how, how passionate he was. And now Paul Saul is saying, look. He, he was equally passionate. He's, but he, or but even he more so because he's empowered by the Holy okay. Spirit. You know he had to have a huge impact on all those people that knew him huge yeah. impact so I, that that jumps out and so how did uh, and just wrap up here my thought how did how did Saul convince all these Jewish brothers and sisters that Christ really was the Messiah and we kind of touched on this earlier what he did he used the Word of God mm -hmm. he went back to the Word of God and he and he showed them where where Jesus Christ was the Messiah of the Scripture, that's what he did, and he also shared his own testimony. So I guess my question for you is: Have you had your Damascus Road experience? I believe God wants all of us to have a Damascus Road experience, and that we can go out and we can share our testimony. Which, if you read the uh, the Book of Acts and you go through some of his writings over and over and over, Paul shared his testimony every one of us one we were born a Saul but but when we are converted we Come are Paul. Paul right that's and right. that's what God wants in each one of our lives and we see that in the life of Paul so yes sir. as we transition to ending you know we, we look at situations sometimes in life and go you know how in the world could could God use Saul how, yeah. how could that impossible situation ever be turned around and um, Kim Tidwell, one of our regular listeners, is a teacher in a Hello, local Kim. school. And um, she sent something uh, in, and I'd like to read this. She has a student who didn't want school to end. This is a 10-year-old yeah. who didn't want school to end. So he ran off to commit suicide oh. so he could, quote, be with Grandma. And he faces uh, depressing life circumstances and is in need of a family to take him in. Okay. So we don't know where this little boy is tonight. We just know that there's an apparent impossible mm. situation. And, but, but God has something in mind for this boy just like he did Saul. Yeah. And so I think whether it's tonight or in your private prayers, you need to pray for this little 10 year old boy wherever yeah. he is tonight, that God will wrap his arms around him and that help can reach right. him soon. You know, there's power. If you read the book of Acts, when the church came together and prayed together, God worked miracles. We see that over and over. So as we pray for this young man here, there's other, there's a lot right now. We were talking about that a little earlier 
the, our young people right now are really going through a whole lot. There's a lot of depression going on out there mm -hmm. with the young people. We were talking about it's real common right now. A lot of our young people are cutting themselves. We don't, we don't know why this is happening, but it is happening. It's really common. A lot of depression going on right now. We need to pray for our young people. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe as we close tonight, Hamilton, if you, would you like to lift up a prayer for the young people out there? Yeah. Uh, and and just just pray for God to, to move and touch and this this young man right here especially. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, dear Jesus, uh, as we close tonight, we want to uh, especially lift up the brokenhearted and the people that are living in such a dark place they can't see you and they see depression and suicide as the only way out. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, people that have a lot of questions that only you can answer. And I, I pray that you'd, you'd be, uh, you said that you would be near those who need comfort. You, you would comfort the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I pray tonight that you just send your presence to be amongst every single one of those people, especially that, uh, that little kid that didn't want school to end, mm -hmm. um, that you especially be with him. Um, I pray that you will uh, put people into all young people's lives that they can look up to that will help them not to pursue these things like cutting and um, hurting themselves, just so that you'll give them peace instead of anxiety, hope instead of depression, and that you will ultimately be their source of life. In your holy and precious name, amen. 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 Thank amen. you, Hamilton. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us tonight. Just know this, Jesus loves you, and he wants you to go out and preach the word of God with boldness. There is power in the Word of God, power to change lives. I hope you can be part of that. Bye-bye.